Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode. I will be discussing wildlife, in particular the few that I found here on Jorvik, including the moose, the deer, and the bear. So stay tuned. So the deer and moose actually belong to the same family. They're called the deer family or uh, cervids. And what that actually means is that they walk on kind of elongated toes, I guess you could say. They're called cloven hooves. Biologically speaking, they're actually long toes. And that's actually the ones that they walk on are the third and the fourth toe. So they actually walk on their toes and not like human beings. We walk on our soles, um, so the entire foot, and they just walk on um, toes. The other thing, what um, cervid actually means, or the family of the, the deer family, what that actually means is, um, as opposed to, for example, the bovids, which are antelopes and sheep and cows, the cervids, so the deers, they can actually regrow and lose their antlers every single year, which the bovids can't. They have horns and they keep them their entire life and if they ever are damaged or fall off then that's that's that <laughs> they don't get a second chance they don't get a second pair so what's the importance of antlers well it's basically just a show-off tool to let other males know how strong they are um, how how old they are usually the older a male animal a male deer is um, the larger his antlers are and so usually it's a good show and tale of their genetics. Sometimes it can also be used to ward off predators. They just, you know, put their heads down and that is also a good defense mechanism. Although wolves rarely try to go against full grown healthy adults. So mostly it's just, yeah, to fight against other males or show them who's stronger and to oppress the women, of course. <laughs> so what are other characteristics of deer? So usually the males are larger than the females. And as I mentioned, only the males, except with reindeer, have antlers. And they are also good jumpers and swimmers. And they molt twice a year. That means that they shed their coat. And usually it's also not only a different texture, but it's also a different color. So in the winter, of course, they get that really thick winter coat, and it's a less saturated, darker version of their summer coat, just so they can more easily blend into their surroundings in the cold winter months. And then, of course, in the summer, it's nice and shiny and usually has like a brown, reddish tint. So they are also cud chewers, meaning that they regurgitate their food to digest it properly. So plants are really, really difficult to digest. It's a lot easier eating meat that can be easily processed by the body. Plants are kind of a pain. So that just takes a while. So what the deer has is he takes the plants or eats it, swallows it down, and later when it's a bit quieter and you can chill and relax, then he kind of, you know, regurgitates it, it comes back up, and then you can chew and chew and chew and chew until it's like this paste, and then he just swallows it back down again. So he has a stomach with four chambers, and so it takes for plants to properly be digested. So for all the vitamins and minerals and everything healthy to be taken out and used in the body, it has to go through four chambers before it's properly processed. Um, so yeah, that is really hard work, which is also one reason why they prefer usually young, young fresh grass, young spuds that are just broken out of the ground, um, which, yeah, can be a problem because they don't give new trees a chance because usually they're eaten off by the time they can actually grow properly. But it's really good food and nourishment for deer who are busy pretty much all year round. I think that the deer might be based off of the fallow deer. The fallow deer is um, the only European deer that also has spots as an adult. 
So most deers have fawns with spots, that's, that's normal, but usually when they grow older, then they lose that, they, they lose those spots and they don't have any, the fallow deer actually keeps them. So the males are called bucks, the females are called does, and the little ones are called fawns. And the males, they weigh about 80 kilos, which is 170 pounds, and the females weigh half of that. They live around 12 to 16 years, um, although I think that's kind of generous because nature is kind of cruel, and so usually animals don't live that long out in nature. In zoos, they can live longer or in captivity, but in nature, I'm guessing they'll live a healthy eight years, but that's just me assuming, so apparently on... Um, their description and says 12 to 16 years. So I guess we can go with that. So they have different colors or four, actually four colors, a common color, um, which is basically the one you see here. Although in the winter, um, some have a solid brown coat without spots. And then they have two special colors, which is melanistic, that's um, almost entirely black, or leucistic, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, that's almost entirely white. That doesn't mean they're albinos, but it does mean that they have a lack of color pigments. So they have like a cream colored, really light coat, but regular eyes and everything. And on the black and white version, you can't see any spots. So fallow deer, they are a super social bunch. They really like to stick together and hang around all year round, except during mating season where all of them scatter uh, for obvious reasons. They kind of like to pair up just, um, you know, male and female and kind of spend romantic time together. And then they split up again. And um, after the rut is over, so after the mating season is over, then they gather and it's not uncommon to see herds as large as 150 animals. So yes, very social. And they're not too slow either. They can run up to 50 kilometers. That's about 30 miles per hour. So compared to other deer, they're, they're quite, quite fast. And then we have the moose. So the moose is actually the largest species of deer. Uh, the males are called bulls. The females are called cows. And the babies are called calves. So they live in the northern hemisphere, so they prefer woodsy areas, uh, especially mixed woods, and they prefer it cold. So they don't like to go in regions where it doesn't snow. They actually do prefer snow, however, regions where it doesn't snow too much that they can't get around. They do have long legs, but they still don't like to be slowed down too much by their environment because um, they also have to be wary of predators. So they do like it cold with a little bit of snow, but not too much. That's, that's their ideal. So they're, they're kind of like me. Yeah. <laughs> so they eat terrestrial and aquatic vegetation. Terrestrial means above ground and aquatic, of course, in lakes and stuff, whatever greenery they can find and munch on, um, they're happy with. So like I mentioned, they also have predators. Wolves are among them, bears, and of course, humans, although adult healthy um, moose don't have to worry about wolves or bears. It's usually only either the really young ones, the calves, or the extreme sickly or old that have to worry about predators. And unlike any other deer, the moose are actually extremely solitary animals. So they like to be on their own. They don't really like uh, to team up. And the only exception they'll make is, of course, mother and their young. They're extremely good mothers, and the calves usually stay with them for up to 18 months. And, well, at least until they can have further babies, and then they kind of shoo the older kids out of the house before they can have new calves again. So they can get actually really tall. They can get up to two meters in height. That's about six feet and they weigh around uh, 900 pounds, that's about 370 kilograms, while females weigh a little bit lighter, around 700 pounds uh, or 300 kilograms. Um, so a little less, but not too noticeable. 
Now, for people who actually live near moose, um, they know to be a bit cautious because moose can also become aggressive when they feel threatened and they know of their size and know how to use it. And so when you're near a moose, then it's best not to spook it and best to go your own way. And if by an unlucky chance you're actually charged by a moose, it's okay to run away. Um, you're not really on their food list and they don't really feel particularly threatened by humans. So if you run away, then the chances are very slim that they'll actually chase you and go after you. Yeah, that's all about the moose for now. We will go right on to the bear. So as you can see by the hump of this bear, it is uh, most likely a grizzly bear, or that's the model that they probably based this off. So grizzlies have a wide variety in sizes, also depending on where they live. So if they live inland, so near foresty areas, then they tend to be quite a bit smaller. They um, have less protein. They eat more vegetarian meals or scavenge whatever carcasses they can find. However, the bears that live in coastal regions, they usually have plenty of fish to feed off of. They have salmon, trout, bass, and so on and so forth. So they have a more protein-based diet and they're able to get a lot larger, even twice the size. It is unbelievable. So that kind of makes sense that the bear here in Jorvik kind of a smaller one, clearly an inland bear. But yeah, usually grizzlies are all brown in color. There are a few exceptions of grizzlies that are a bit lighter and have like kind of a light white cream colored fur tip I suppose and those by the natives were often called spirit bears. We also had a few bears wander across our property and they were um yeah I wasn't really scared not intimidated I just, of course, kept my distance, let them be, and they just kind of went their own way. But it was very impressive to see. <laughs> so yeah, how do you recognize a grizzly bear as opposed to any other brown bear, any other bear? So the grizzlies, as I mentioned before, have a pronounced hump on their shoulder blades. That's uh, clearly a way how you can recognize them. But also when you follow the back and go to the rump, the back end, on grizzlies, the rump is actually lower than the shoulders. While on black bears, the rump is actually higher than the shoulders. So it kind of goes downhill. And the claws are usually longer on grizzlies than on black bears, which of course on these bears you can't really tell, but let's just assume it is that way. And usually they have wider faces with smaller ears. So they do kind of have a teddy bear appearance. So grizzlies um, have kind of a dream life. <laughs> they, or maybe not, depending on what you think, but um, they hibernate for five to seven months at a time. Of course, during the winter months when there isn't enough food. Now in warmer climates, for example, California, where there's plenty of food all year round, they can skip the entire hibernation process. But yeah, so usually in northern climates, um, they definitely hibernate and they don't wake up until maybe March or the females, I think, snooze a little longer. They press that snooze button for another two months and don't wake up until around May or so. I think that's when I saw the first females come out. But they also have babies to look after. So the babies are born in the den and she nurses them, and once they're a bit larger, then they all emerge. Mothers and babies, they emerge, and basically only have a few months to gather as much food as they can before they have to go back into hibernation. So they are um, carnivores, but so that means that they're meat eaters. However, they actually eat everything. They're opportunists, they're kind of omnivores that means they eat plant and meat based so 
they'll be happy with eating roots. They often, you know, often find bear scrapings um, in the woods. They scrape up roots and eat those. And what they particularly love are berries. And wild berries, wild raspberries and stuff, they usually grow on the side of roads. So that's why people often see bears on the side of roads because they're there scavenging for um, fresh berries. They're mostly solitary, so they like to be on their own. And um, you actually only see multiple bears in coastal areas um, when there's enough food to go around so they don't really have to fight off anyone trying to steal their food. And so that's when you can actually see multiple bears next to each other. However, that doesn't mean that they live together. That just means that they're using the situation. Everybody's there to fill their stomachs but they are very solitary animals. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's the short version. Of course, I have a bunch of stories and experiences and um, anecdotes of stuff that I experienced. So if you're interested in that, I can definitely go into detail um, in another video, but I think for now uh, I should slow this video down, or I should stop it, and we can maybe continue in another video. Let me know your thoughts and wishes and dreams and hopes and whatever you like, and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye!